there was a piece of information that was concretized for me that I am a portal by which those I teach can come to the abundance if I come in on that high flying disc good that's a really good way of describing it isn't it mm -hmm. my power of influence is is riding on my openness mm -hmm. but more is riding on it than me because my power of influence includes a lot of others I can open a portal for many mm -hmm. in other words meaning like the question of what is our soul and if if we truly come into the space of that infinite magnitude of what that soul can be well just look at it this way in the context of what we've been talking about here today if you've got no wobble so you're tuned into that energy uh -huh. and there's no resistance or contradiction or wobble in that energy you are more influential than millions who are not in other mm -hmm. words there's just such leverage mm -hmm. in that alignment that it's mm -hmm. really worth figuring it out and doing it mm -hmm. and then I'm in the business of soothing I teach teachers how to basically help kids not wobble and so one of the greatest things we had this discussion last fall here in this seat about um, you know if schools are prisons and children are freedom seekers and then you sent me on a little good a great journey where I have been working on being that portal and so now I'm kind of asked I want to ask you another level question so I well, before feel you it. go too far let's clean up all of that okay. just a little bit <laughs> by saying that every place that anyone stands can be the place of fresh clear air breathing freedom or bondage okay that every place has the potential to be perceived as bondage or freedom mm -hmm. and so if you are a portal we like that a an ins someone who wants to inspire freedom mm -hmm. then it, it, it's like make a decision and line up with it look for the positive aspects of the school or the place where you stand and and then practice your freedom within that framework until you feel free mm -hmm. because people can make you could be locked in a room but you cannot be controlled about what you think and if you can control what you think no one can ever lock you in a room it, it's just that way mm -hmm. not long term in other words your temporary bondage can turn to eternal freedom if you don't get bogged down by the perception of bondage which is non-existence it's perceptual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so to teach freedom you've got to feel it you can't see people in what you perceive as bondage and lead them out of bondage you right. will never lead anyone out of what you perceive as bondage you will lead them into deeper bondage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hear you and I definitely just had that experience of leading people out of bondage yesterday um, what I'm I my question today is this that I'm starting to get this feeling of when I'm working with teachers that I they they get it okay they get it they get that if I sit at that door every day and I welcome the children and I'm like I can't wait to teach you I wow what opportunities we have this is gonna be fun this is gonna I, be fun something that could help that is I cannot wait to co-create with you yeah because they are learning more from the students than they are teaching yes yes I cannot wait to co-create with you I cannot wait for the wisdom that I have amassed to rendezvous with the freedom you still feel we can say that better I cannot wait for the wisdom that I have amassed to rendezvous with the alignment that you still possess mm -hmm. I affirm that I will in no way squelch your alignment in the quest for knowledge mm -hmm. that what I bring to the table are facts figures physical stuff what you bring to the table is an openness to receive I will never get those two flipped in terms of importance your feeling 
of freedom and well-being must be preserved. Otherwise, nothing that I have to teach you will ever be received by you. Right. That is really good. Right. Yeah, it's really good. Sort of keeping your priorities straight. Mm -hmm. So how these kids feel matters most, how they feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the, and so think about it. If, if you make them feel like, oh, there's a whole world of stuff out here that you don't know, and I've been assigned to make sure that you come to know it, ah, but if instead you say, oh, there's so much fun stuff to learn and you are ripe for learning, whole different vibration, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to go a little deeper into, let's say if I have a classroom of 20 and two of them aren't, I, I'm doing the instruction as I, I am co-creating, I'm, I'm there and we have these, we're having fun. And... They are your students? And I'm a teacher's students. Yeah, and I'm, they, I'm but they are it. your students. Yeah, words, they are to you mm -hmm. as the children are to them. Yes. So everything that we're talking about that a teacher wants for a child student, mm -hmm. you want for a teacher adult student. Mm -hmm. There's no difference. Right. Right. They I come see to that. you however they come to you. Right. I guess what I'm... The question is, how's your portal when they come? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how's, if my portal is, if I'm there, this is, I'm not sure how to ask it. I think it's the, if it's a child with dyslexia, like we like to have labels for everything, it seems like, and they're not learning this way. And I am teaching a teacher how to potentially open the portal so this child can learn to read. It's how much of the skill, the wisdom, the knowledge in teaching that child, if, this, if they've never done it that way before, even if they've opened the portal to energy, but if, the, if that teacher's never taught a child in that way before, will they have the skill to do it? Will the wisdom come to them through the energy? Or will I have to model it for them and show them how this co-creation well, can happen would, with the child? Well, we would put it in this way relative to anyone who's teaching anything. We would say that 20% of it is a procedure that you could learn and teach. But 80% of it, we would say that 10% of it, 10% of it, we would say that 5% of it, <laughs> five, we would say that one, we would say that less than 1% of it, less than 1% of it is methodology that you can learn and teach. And that more than 99% of it has to do with their alignment and therefore their ability to receive inspiration that is precisely tailored to the receptiveness of this individual and very important student mm -hmm. okay that explains and, and what makes it hard for teachers is that they're in a they they want to make they they want it to be cookie cutter they want it to be all the same for everyone they don't want it to be individually tailored even though Source is individually tailoring everything for all of you. So that's why we're encouraging you to just back up a little bit, help them hook up with source, and then mm -hmm. you've got it made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you as a teacher do not see yourself as the source of all information, but instead you see yourself as the catalyst to connect them with source, once you hook them up with source, source will guide them to the information that, is, that they're looking for. Yes. Yes. So, so as a teacher, you could say, as a teacher of teachers, that's the way we label ourselves too, mm -hmm. as a teacher of teachers. But as a teacher, you could say, my objective as a teacher is to soothe, inspire your alignment, which will lead you to the answers to every question that you could pose. But there's more not just to the questions your alignment will not just to the answers to the questions your alignment will lead you to the questions that are necessary before the answers in other words this inspired life experience is inspiring the situations that pose the questions as well as inspiring the situations that give the answers this is the leading edge you just have to get clear in your mind what the leading edge is all about it's for fun it's for fun it's for exhilaration it's for expansion, which is fun. It's for learning, which is fun. It's for evolution, which is fun. It's not for filling voids or fixing gaps or closing gaps or fixing things that are broken or answering questions. 
Because if the goal was really to get all the questions answered, then there would be no reason to keep living life that keeps causing you to ask more questions. The goal cannot be to get all the answers to all the questions. The goal has to be never ending questions and never ending answers. Why? Because it's fun. So if you can stimulate that first within yourself and then within your teachers and then within the students, the children, that they still remember it. That's what it's all about. It's for fun. If you could say to them, oh, we're going to think up new things all the time. And I don't have all the answers. You know why? Because all the questions haven't been discovered. But together, as we figure out questions, we'll figure out answers. What a classroom that will be. Can you imagine a classroom? Oh, got one going on right here, don't we? <laughs> Where the questions are inspired and the answers are inspired and the evolution is taking place. And you're all on the leading edge of all of that, you see. And every classroom is that or can be that or would best be that mm -hmm. there's more so you started to ask a question for a reason about a couple of a couple of the a couple of those that you're wanting to help are causing you to wobble more than some of the others and what to do about it give us some details um, a student who's a teacher comes and says hi this is usually how it works um, I'm a mom, actually, of a child who's dyslexic, and it occurs to me that now that you're talking to me that if we haven't opened up the right situation for my son or my daughter, and now I realize I held my child back two years in school, and we just did it louder and longer and made it less fun. And so, so, so what's this person actually saying to you? That they're worried about their child never learning to read, never being, having a fun, successful educational experience. And so that is where I, I actually get a, I have a pause usually because there's so much energy that has been built up in that story. Because there's, because there's a lot of wobble in it. There's and a there's lot not, of wobble in it. And when there's a lot of wobble... Mm -hmm. And even the mom is shaking usually. So when there's a lot of wobble, mm -hmm. which is a condition that you are observing, this is the question, the only question that matters. How does, is that wobble making you wobble? Right. Because if that wobble makes you wobble, then you're done. But, mm -hmm. if that, but if you're anticipating the wobble because you've seen it before mm -hmm. and you know that it's just a lack of understanding and it'll be all right mm -hmm. and you stand in your steadiness so you don't wobble and so you convey it's going to be all right, we're figuring this out mm -hmm. and I appreciate what you have to say here and we'll all figure this out mm -hmm. and this is good information and, we're, and we are figuring this out and I wouldn't worry about that because your child is really bright in this way and this way and this way and it's going to be all right and I've enjoyed this conversation and and uh, so much more for us to all discover together and soothing, 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 okay. soothing, soothing. You see, one of the things that you'll notice is that if someone's wobbling and they're conditioned that you're observing, which is causing you to sort of wobble a little bit, mm -hmm. once they make you wobble, you're done. And then you don't even like them because they caused you to wobble. <laughs> but... But as even mm. after the fact, you realize you didn't have to wobble and then you get right. your balance back again. In other yeah. words, the whole name of the game is not wobbling. Yeah. And so you just, you just rethink it until you find your place within it and then you go at it again. What you right. want to say to them, really what you want to convey to everyone, learning is such an interesting thing. And just the idea that things are standardized and that people are supposed to learn in a, in a similar way with each other is so not holistic it's so not source like it's so no not like the individual precise program that is divinely devised from non-physical in other words what you want to say to them is everyone is unique and everyone learns in their own specific ways and and the whole fun of teaching is discovering the portal through which this one can best learn not to establish a standard that we're trying to cram them all into that's the jail in school yep you see yeah but but if we're just all here together and we're figuring out as best we can and we're all on equal footing in these ways source adores all of us source has a clear path for all of us it's working out for all of us. It's win, 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 win for all of us. 
If that's your premise and you really mean it, then you'll be able to soothe anyone who crosses your path, no matter what kind of wobble they got going on.